Power apps are all about data. And one of the most common thing you do with data is put them in a Power Apps gallery. But inevitably, your users want to filter that data, right? And they have all these different crazy ideas about it. Ugh. Well, don't fret. What we're going to do is we're going to spend the next 10 minutes talking about 10 different ways to filter your data. And no, number seven will not shock you. I can't stand it when people do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dive in and have some fun. So first, the lay of the land. So we're going to do this using Dataverse, but there are only a few caveats if you're using like SQL, SharePoint, Excel is different. I'll try to point those out as we go along the way. But Dataverse is easier for me to package up for the people over at training.powerapps91.com who can download this, okay? And so what I did though, is I wanted a way to make the sample data. So I had a little fun, I didn't want to be clever, but I hear you can see I'm using a bunch of firsts and shuffles and switches and ran betweens to generate truly random data every time we press this button, right? Kind of fun, okay? So if we press this button, we'll see that we get 10 records like so, okay? So we got some random data. Also what I did is I went up here to settings and let's go ahead and change the delegation limit to one, right? Anytime that you're testing and you're filtering and stuff and you're not sure if you're having delegation problems, setting this limit to one, you know if you do a query that only gets one item back that should get more than one, you know that you've had a, a problem, right? So delegation kind of got you. Other than that, we have two identical galleries down here, right? So the data is called data to filters. It's just a data source that we pulled in over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate this one, but not this one. The idea is that you always wanna have an unfiltered one as you're learning filtering, so you can check and see if you're seeing all the data you should. And so over here, we can tell that we are, you know, as we change this one, we'll be able to see and validate against the other side. Okay, it's enough. Now let's filter by date. So to filter by date, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say filter, and then we have a date column called project date. And then we're just gonna say something like less than today. Close our parentheses, boom, right? The today function returns today's date. And now we can see that we're getting all of these records back, right? All the records are less than today, so that shouldn't be a problem. Always start with this though, because now you know it is most basic since this is working. So if you start to do funky things here with the date, you know it's either the problem with what you're doing in the funky portion, because you knew it worked when you had it basic. So let's say we want to filter everything before September 1st last year. So here you can see that six of the items are shown, right? Because six of the items are less than that particular date. And if you're wondering how I know that, right here we're using the name of the gallery dot all items count. So that's how we can see that there's only six items in here instead of there should always be 10 when it's unfiltered. Okay, so that's how you do a date. Remember that here you can change this. It could be the today function, you could be looking it up, you could be calculating the date, it could be in a variable, it could be a date picker, it doesn't matter. It just wants a date here. The same thing if you want to do a date range, all you're going to do is add an and here, right? So we just say and project date greater than 6-1-2023, and you can see that there's only two projects that fell in that task, uh, that window. And so remember, and just says that both this side and this side both have to be true. Since both of these are true, boom, we've got that. And now we know how to filter by date and filter by date range. All right, we'll jump to a new screen here. And so now what we want to do is we want to filter by the current user. So if we go here, there's different ways to do this depending on how your data is. So here you can see that I have a field called project manager email, we'll just copy that, that is just the text of a person's email. So if we wanted to use that one, we would say something like filter and our data project manager email equals user colon email, right? Because the user function returns a bunch of different properties, email being one of them of the currently logged in user. And so you can see that three of these were me, right? But this project was assigned to Buddy and then there's some that were assigned to Chewy. And so those aren't gonna show up. So if you're using an email field, which is probably the most common we see when people are manually carrying around, that would be how you do it. What if you want to do it based on the created by or modified? In that case, you do something like filter by the created by dot, right? So see the created by is the name of the field dot primary email and dataverse, that's the name of the field. In SharePoint, if you're using a people column, it would be dot mail, and then it would be equals user dot email. Sometimes here you also might find yourself need to do like to lower or to upper to like try to get the cases to match. We're not having that problem today, so we're going to ignore it, but sometimes you will run into that. But there you go. So now we're doing that. Now, if you're saying in Shane, email isn't always the best way. You're right. You can also use their intra or Azure object ID. And so if you want to do that, what you would do would be created by dot Azure AD object ID and then equals user dot intra object ID. Now, SharePoint doesn't offer this. This would only be in a Dataverse side, but the intra object ID is something newer, and so that gives you the chance to take advantage of that. All right, new screen, new problems, right? We're running out of time already, I feel like. But so next, we want to do the text input. So we'll insert a text input. And so here, right, this is if you want to do some type of specific text match. So what you're most likely going to do is filter and then a text field. So in this case, project location equals text input three. So right now, you can see I have nothing. But if we go here and type in Kentucky, then we would be able to see that, right? Or if we typed in Georgia. Now, what you might want to do with a text input 
is maybe instead of doing something direct like this, you might want to try something like starts with, right? So if you do something like starts with, and then the fields, so we're going to switch to project name and then text input three texts. What's neat about this one, if you hit play, if we start to type in PRO, right? Now we just see the ones that the title or the name column is project one, project nine, but we're not seeing the task and things like that. So starts with might be a little bit more interesting if you have a text input. A lot of times people want to use the search function here. We're not going to cover that in this video. Check up there for a different video, but look at that if you're looking to do by a text input. All right, next up on the new screen, we got drop downs and radio. So the reason I say drop downs and radio is because they both have the same output, right? It's all about drop down one dot selected dot value. So in this case, if we want to use a drop down against like our data to filter product statuses, right? So we use the choices function because now it returns all of the different choices available to us. And so now if we go down here, we can say something like filter, right? All this project status equals drop down to selected value. Now you see the planned. And if we change this to finished, we see the finished started, right? And so if you use a radio control, it also returns to be this radio dot selected dot value. Same thing. It has the same items property on the drop down. Also with this, what you might want to do is just change the allow empty selections to true. And then now you've got that set to true. So if they have nothing chosen, you'll see nothing. But then you go down here and you add on here and you say, or is blank drop down to selected value. And so if it's blank, you see everything. If you choose one, you only see one. I'll put a link to a video up there. It talks about more in that method. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do using that. All right, very similar but different is the combo box. If we throw one of those on the screen. Now we're going to set the choice of the items to the same exact thing, that choices formula. Okay, so we got the same things in the drop down. Now, what's going to be different here is if you remember with these, you are able with a combo box to select multiple things, right? So now how do we get that down here? The formula is going to look a little different. So here it's going to be filter our data project status. Name of our column is in combo box three selected items, right? So the in operator is only delegable in Dataverse. I think maybe in SQL as well, but you wouldn't have the same setup. But keep that in mind is that this one can cause you delegation problem in SharePoint if you use in. But now if we hit play, right, we got two, we got that. If we change and say add finished, now seven of them, right? And if we then can go in here and deselect started, now we're down to six, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're back down to one. So in is an interesting way to do this, but you do have delegation challenges with that. So if you're going to use combo boxes to select multiple, make sure you're using a data source that supports that. Okay, so sometimes you want to filter by gallery. So if we insert ourselves a gallery, and we're going to use a horizontal gallery, so we go sideways, we're going to set the items to be a hard-coded table of Kentucky, Georgia, Texas, whatever. We're going to expand over here, and we're going to say, hey, I only want to see blank. And now we can go in here, and we can collapse this, and we will insert a label. Boom, something like that, right? So if we click here, we can kind of drag the whole thing up. All right, and then if we shrink all these, there you go. So now we've got a gallery to choose from, right? And so if you want to filter your data by gallery, what you're going to take advantage of is just the dot selected from that as well. So you go down here and you'd say, so you'd say filter and then your field, in our case, project location, and then gallery selected value. And so if we click on Texas, we see the Texas ones, Florida, we see the Florida ones, Kentucky. So it's the same exact concept. Filtering about buttons. So if we insert a button, really all you're trying to do here is you're trying to create an environment where you set a variable that is going to then drive the value of your filter. So something like update context, create a variable called var filter value and set it to Kentucky. We'll change the text to this to say Kentucky. And so then now if we go down here, we would say something like filter or data project location equals the, the variable or the variable is blank. So right now the variable is blank. So we see everything. But if we click Kentucky, boom, we've got that. Then if you like that, then you could just copy the button, paste it, change this one to say Texas, update the text. And now if you hit play right now, we've got Texas button, Kentucky button, and then you just make a button for blank and you make a button for the other different values. Boom, you're filtering by tech values. All right, maybe number 10 is going to shock you here. So Check boxes was the last one on my list and I've never really done them for a customer. And I was just thinking about this, like, Hey, how would I use this here? And so I built out this big old thing and it's terrible, right? Like you should not be trying to filter a data set by check boxes, assuming that you're like trying to say, I want to check box for Virginia, Georgia, Kentucky, Texas. The only time check boxes work is if you have a true Boolean column, which Dataverse doesn't have, but if you're using SharePoint or SQL, then you could use it as the dot value around it. But in the case of Dataverse, you're never going to use checkboxes to filter your data because it just requires this big complex if thing that's not a good idea. And I made it in 10 minutes and a bunch of seconds. Hooray! With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.